What's up, buddy? What's going on? We're back. I know. Again. Hard to believe that. You Still keep, keep waiting back. for you to text me being like, we're done. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like a bad breakup. <laughs> Welcome to I don't ask any questions about. Yeah. Podcast. Exactly. With your, oh. with your peoples, Zach and Murph. Exactly. Peoples. Welcome. Yes. What's going on? Buddy? Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Sorry. Welcome. I, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> It's announced the name again. Welcome to the <laughs> Naval Glaze Podcast. It's only like our 10th time. Just a little bit of sprinkle of American, there a little bit of sprinkle of Canadian, even though they're exactly. kind of in hot water, but you know what? We're okay. We're just, everyone's in hot water. We're all in hot water. We wish so we had there's hot like, water. We have hot water, but <laughs> better other places. But yes, that's uh, yes, we're we're all in hot water at this point. Exactly. So, yeah, Indeed. you know, yeah. Indeed. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the podcast. <laughs> there we go. Yes. There we go. We're hitting hot water. Canada's on hot water. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Thanks for such a Canadian thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by there, bud. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Oh, don't you know? We're <laughs> in all water. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Geez. Welcome. Uh, we are, man, It's it's been a, it's been a been week a while. again. Yeah. Um, I we're never, not as tired this time. Yeah, we did not. some extra shots of cocaine. Yes. Or I did. I don't know. Someone did it. So if someone did something. It was there and it's gone. So it's all. I just asked for shots of uh, pre workout. You just did there cocaine. I said, no, it's but you said, come on. It's what the real people do. It's what the real <laughs> podcasts do. You said, come on, big vagina, let's go. Exactly. That's how I get you to do anything. <laughs> Black tar heroin, just, all right. hey there, vagina. <laughs> if uh, you guys feel like you're being bullied, make sure you call the bully hotline. Uh, no, he won't. He's a big vagina. <laughs> you, try, you come after somebody. Oh, you call it's the bully hotline. What are you, a vagina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just internalize those fear, those feelings and push them down so that eventually you just want to take some sort of public rage on a Chipotle worker. So that's usually how it works. Wow, that really hit home. I know. You're, I know. <laughs> that's how we do it. Oh... Boy, uh, as you guys uh, can tell, we introduced by the podcast, Murph's, right? Did yeah, we, we get there. Did. Okay, yeah. we already got yeah. there. So we'll you, pass you can't, there. you can't okay. bitch at me about that. No, you're right. I already um, did, but it's fine. As, as uh, if you guys don't know, Canada's in hot water, and and they're they're getting frustrated. So that's why Murph is getting slightly sassy tonight. Oh, totally. That's totally what it is. Yep. You know, <laughs> haven't changed I, my boxers. Nothing like that. Just no, no, no special detergent. Just no sassy Canadianness. <laughs> <laughs> Just, We're just Canadians don't get angry; they just get sassy. Apparently, we just, we just watched a video on Canada. Yes. It was like uh, at least I saw one a couple of years or God, a couple of days ago. It's like Trudeau was. He basically was saying, it's "Like I feel safer in a Black Lives Matter protest rather than uh, this this convoy that's coming through that's detesting you know vaccine requirements for truckers going in and out from Canada to the U.S." So I'm like, <laughs> and the worst part is they're like. These truckers finally made Ottawa, Canada, and they're just like just stopping traffic, and it's it's just the funny thing to me yeah. about the whole broadcast. They were saying like they were just picking up people. They were, hey, you're going to Ottawa? Let's go, hop on in. We're getting a convoy. Jeez, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well most, freedom convoy. Right? Let me take that back. Well, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but I guess to make sure <laughs> just... that it's pr- appropriately understood, <laughs> Ottawa is like. The quote unquote country's capitals. That's where like the parliament building is and all that. So oh boy. it's not like they just picked a random place in Canada and were like, let's go there. It's like, no, they went to Ottawa to <laughs> protest that they have to get vaccinated, <laughs> uh, which I did admire, oh, which man. you have to admit this. Sometimes the American news does an awful job at this. True. But the this feed that we watched did acknowledge that the Americans require the same thing. Yeah. So it's just unfortunately though in Canada, uh, they have I, I imagine like just Europe, a little bit louder. The, well, I think like Europe too, because at least my family I've talked to is like they've been under harsher crackdowns than oh, sure. um, the U.S. And of course, all they hear in the news is about what the U.S. is doing and all this stuff. So basically, <laughs> at this point now, they have um, they have been pushed to uh, pushed to this. Like they just don't. They're tired of it all, so it's just like yeah, it's which you never thought you'd hear somebody say that about Canadians, but yes, they they have buttons and they've been pushed and now they're pissed, which <laughs> could be a good or a bad thing. Uh, but you know, how are you that's feeling like, today? I don't know this button. Yeah, no, like, it. I mean, you have to admit though, you heard the remember when yeah. COVID was height, it was like they couldn't even oh, walk outside in parks. Like it was like that's Australia. how bad it was. Like it was just it, it was just craziness. It was equivalent um, of Australia, except yeah. you know without the camp. Exactly, yeah, COVID yeah. camps. 
exactly. <laughs> so it's just like seriously. So it's just like yeah, it's, it's and it's like they were it's... they were fine with it at the beginning, but like everything, we're just we're all sick and tired, and it's like oh, yeah. at the end of the day, it's like what's is life worth living if you're just stuck inside all the time and afraid of a cough? Like it's just kind of like yeah, it's this podcast is brought to you by Canadian Tourism. Exactly, visit Canada. <laughs> It's fun up here, eh? <laughs> There's always something to do. <laughs> exactly. No, but... Edmonton's like, yeah. guys, what, what do we get? Any any comments? No, shut up. Shut up. But I do know no some... You. I do know some people <laughs> after Trudeau was uh, elected definitely were kind of fist... Like slapping themselves in the face. Like, fist why palm. the heck did that happen? Yeah, fist... Yeah, face palm. <laughs> face palm. And go, why did that happen? Yeah, he's... So going back to the, the joke you made, yes, it was a horrible comment and it scares me how some people become and get into politics that just don't know how to uh, how to well, you string a like, sentence together or don't like, like just go their... off the cue cards like go off the cue cards like like <laughs> why you go to left their field? citizenry and what they're like they're not true canadians so what the hell are they <laughs> yeah yeah um, i i don't know i i'm not derelicts so, right i'm not <laughs> I'm not supporting him, but I do know a lot of people go have business in Canada and in the U.S., but they live on one side of the border compared to the other. Yeah. So I don't know. It's easy, yeah. You can go buy a Canada flag and wave it and look like a Canadian, but not be a Canadian. So that's like where that's where maybe I could slightly understand that mentality, but it's not right for him to say it. Like, it's just kind of like, obviously, there's going to be a good majority of those people are Canadians. Like To be fair, we saw a guy with to be a, fair. a, a yeah. weed... A weed uh, Canada flag. So. so my running theory is because he was huge on legalizing weed. He was trolling. And that thing. is like, no, no, he's huge on legalizing weed. And I yeah. think that's why he got elected. Uh, so like that is my theory because I don't, I again, you guys, I've said it on this podcast a million times. And Zach knows <laughs> I do bare minimum to no research. I just go everything off secondhand. And if I remember dude. correctly, his father was a prime minister, but yeah. he has no... Um, education into politics he was actually a school teacher before he became a prime minister if i Man. remember that correctly so Imagine like getting talked down to by a teacher right like <laughs> i'm not saying teachers aren't educated like that and i'm not yeah. saying anything like that but i think unfortunately nowadays with politics like you kind of need to be versed in it a little bit like you kind of yeah. have to know what you're doing like gone are the days that you could just have an education and decide people's fates nowadays it's yeah. kind of like the law is so <laughs> It's not the everything is just so convoluted and so much gray area that it's like you kind of have to have experience to kind of know what you're doing, kind of thing. Like that's like 20s anymore. No, seriously, yeah, or the 1800s or the 1700s, where I was like, oh, you went to college, like, good, you're in. Like you know, it's like, like now it's like, yeah, it's like Benjamin Harrison is not a not abused. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Regardless, Ohio president on that one. I was gonna say, why'd you go? Yeah. Just randomly throwing that on. You know what's funny? Because like it's always like the and 1800s. all of them too. Like Benjamin Harrison, like a very serious looking president. But like what? Like he's why could you like own. Ulysses S. Grant, who was a general and then became president? Like he's from Ohio, guy. technically. Too. I'm aware. That's why I was like and all the Ohio people. <laughs> you ever notice? And I still I love this. A hell of a segue. Yeah, um, perfect. <laughs> we had to get off. Of, we were trashing Canada too much. <laughs> Or one person. I started to die a, inside. Or one person is going to throw a fit. Yeah, you're right. I'm um, throwing a fit. <laughs> not you. Yeah. One listener. One li- um, uh, no, it's it, it's just funny because um, any any list I ever see of, of people who who judge U.S. presidents, the one thing it's just always constant. Like we have this stretch of very mediocre presidents, and ironically, about ninety percent of them came from Ohio because there's like what six. A very mediocre state. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, we are very. Yeah, that's probably what it is. This is why. You know, the state is, is the way it is. It's how we depressing. are. Yep. There's college football and corn, that's it. Corn and depressed. Yes. Depression. <laughs> and college football. Except for the Bengals right now. And right. I know. You guys can that's... just suck it. That's all. That's all. That's, that's Still a little that. butthurt, huh? I, I've never seen a coaching staff single-handedly lose us a game when they're up twice. You know, Actually, though, I don't think you Twice. were like I don't think you were like that. But I find it funny how Andy Reid was the savior, and now this one bad playoff run, he's like, "Get rid of him now!" So. <laughs> oh, dude, these Chiefs fans drive me nuts. Right? <laughs> I, I can't stand it's them. Like, it's uh, the same just thing. Have some chocolate. Put a nice pack on your stomach. You'll get through the cramps. Like <laughs> this, this. Yes, I'm basically this, saying they're PMSing. This. That's where I'm going with right there. If you can't Got get him. that imagery. <laughs> oh, I just. 
Because he said chocolate. I just I didn't know. Yeah, I wasn't sure oh. where you're going with that, Todd Murph. <laughs> Thank you, Murph. Dr. Yeah, Murph here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, it was like the the last, uh, man, I think the last uh, episode we did was like right before, right before we played the Bills. Yes. So that was, God, that was rough. The, you go from like a really good game to one that's just like half good, then you just completely lose it in the second half. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> done. done. Can't You're right, though. It. They had a big lead. So I honestly remember what, 18 points. seeing, yeah, I remember being like, oh, halftime. Wow, they're up by a lot. I'm like, probably don't yeah. even need to turn it on. And yeah. then next thing you know, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> All you had to do was run the ball. Yeah. That's it to finish out the game and that's that's all you needed to do yeah yeah that's it to run the ball throw short but no cocky. i think my favorite thing i always find hilarious is you watch these documentaries on it's like hard knocks on hbo and you see how like these wide receivers train and their job is to oh, run yeah. fast and catch a ball and they like they like get themselves really close to the machine to catch the ball. The gloves are super sticky, like all this stuff. And I felt one of the most defining plays was I think Mahomes threw to Tyreek Hill and he was falling backwards. And most people, <laughs> even myself, know when you catch a football, usually you do something like this. Yeah. And he was like this, and it went through his hands, hit him in the face mask, it's popped right. back out, and was intercepted. And I was like, that is the superstar wide receiver that wearing the diamond chain with the diamond teeth and is talking all sorts of mad game and that and when you need to make a catch that's, that's what, what he does when he makes like when that happens so and like, like and I know the guy pulled him a little bit maybe the ball wasn't in the perfect spot but I'm like you are paid <laughs> millions of dollars <laughs> yep. for to run a route and I know you got to do it really fast and you got to be in good shape that's fine and to catch a football which they yeah. put all these videos on social media of all these insane catches they can do and all this stuff, and they've got the <laughs> sticky gloves that literally the moment you clap, you can't even move your hands. Like it's just like, and yet you can't bring that ball in. Is like baffles me. <laughs> you can't bring that ball in, son. <laughs> right? Yeah. Seriously though, like <laughs> makes no sense. I don't. I am. I guess I'm just old school. I do. I appreciate cockiness, yeah. but I hate cockiness when you're not performing how you need to perform. So I'm like, it's if like, you're an average player probably don't deserve to be cocky even if you're a slight above average player if you are a superstar player talk talk your shit then go it's, for it but like yeah literally just baffles me where i'm like that's your job as a wide receiver like and especially zach knows this because i comment on every every time true he catches the ball he and he immediately stop. takes one step he back and he does these quick little bursts that's what Tyree and i'm does. like dude three guys just came to you by the time you just wasted 80% of your energy doing that little dance. Yeah. And, like, and the announcer's like, look at that. He's like, he's playing tag out there. And I'm like, why do you feed into his ego? Like he just There's lost, tag, right? Son. He just lost three yards after that catch. <laughs> like, you know, at least Gronkowski's a weird guy, but at least like he catches the ball. It's forward progress. Like, so stuff like that. Like we don't get forward progress. No, it, no, it's like, it's don't. or Kelsey, at least Kelsey catches right. the ball. He fucking runs yeah. the ball. He just shuts the hell up and runs the ball. Tyreek Hill, it's like, let's do this, let's do that. Shut Hold up, this out I'm right here, I'm right there. And the next thing you know, it's like, you just lost like five yards and you got tackled. Like, but <laughs> the times he does do it, because he's kind of the only one that can really get away True. with it because he he's so agile and he can just really honestly turn on a really small angle to the point where it's like, if as soon as he gets the ball, boom, turns around, jumps, jumps, jumps. And then as soon as someone's like either remotely slow or, or too, you know, over pursues, bam. Right. He'll get... Because Andy Reid's offense is all about like yards after catch. Correct. And that's you know That's how football that's weird. I thought that was what football is about. I thought that was the whole point of being a wide receiver. You'd be surprised with some offensive philosophy. Oh, they want to go backwards? (laughs) No, Sean, you get I like I like third and twenty. I don't like third and two. I like third and (laughs) twenty. Well, like the whole game, I mean, it it was if you if you look at it from a coaching standpoint on the defensive side, it was like it was some of the worst positions I could be in. Most of the time like if you guys ever watch football again, just look at for, for like your favorite team's defense. If they're ever in third and seven or short, shorter than that, um, it's very difficult to call a play because you're like, I don't know whether to protect long or yeah. protect short or do send a blitz or just not. So it's very difficult to figure that kind out. Kind of have to get yeah, it's a chess match. Yeah. Just kind of figure out what the offense is running all game. Yeah, I, I ideally third and eight or, or more. That's kind of where they want to be a lot of times. So if interesting, if I'm ever like when I was overseas in Germany, if I'm like third and twelve, 
or third and 10, I feel comfortable. I was like, all right, I can run a little bit fancy stuff in the box. I can sit back and then force these idiots to throw the ball up in the air. And that's it. Nice. But if it's third and five, third and six, you're like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn fair, it. fair, fair. <laughs> but it's like all game was like that. I'm like, God, you know, then people, I was like, somebody's going to be on Spagnuolo's butt. <laughs> I was like, we're all screwed on this. Uh, but man. There oh, you well, go. There's, I mean, there's your little glimpse into right into foosball. <laughs> Murph uh, is going to give you the non <laughs> nonpartisan on that one. Jesus. Yeah, that's just my opinion. That's it. That's, and unfortunately, <laughs> my I opinion, guess that's I guess that's why uh, if I wasn't friends with you, I probably would not be at all into football because it's just that's right. It's just big personalities that get paid a lot of money that don't do <laughs> as much as they think they're doing. So it's just like you know. Some of them do. Just, some just of them don't watch Tyreek. Yeah, all some right. of them are worth the money, but others I'm just kind of like it just annoys the shit out of me. It's just like <laughs> it's unfortunately yeah, hockey's it's getting that way too, where it's like you have one or two good seasons and you just coast on that for the rest of your career. It's just like, and that's yeah, that's that's just how it works. But I guess Let's it's show. like I guess that's like a job. You have one or two good years and make company yeah. a lot of money, and then you can just coast on that. So it's Let's like you're and then you're just like, just well, yeah, that just guy's a freak athlete. Yeah, like yeah. I probably on steroids, um, but. <laughs> Just swimming out, watching for your brother. <laughs> Where is he? Uh, well, <laughs> Just screams you know, the whole game, right? <laughs> no, he doesn't scream anymore. He used to, maybe. He's like, "You're you're right, Alex. I see Russian ghost." <sighs> okay, he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I see three pigs. I count two. <laughs> All right, he's lost his damn mind. CT is taking over. <laughs> I don't think he's ever had a concussion. Or really? He has. He's gotten away with it. So I don't know. I don't think he ever has. He's definitely gotten away he's with a big, it. He's a big guy. So <laughs> one guy tried to hit him and it did not go well. So that was that was it. Man, you just need a big dude go pound for pound for him. No, I just also don't want to do bam. that because Tom Wilson will kill you and he's also bad. Oh, yeah, damn. yeah, he's protected. You can't win. No, nope, you can't. <laughs> oh, by the way, I saw something this week. I, I I hate to like start off with sports for the whole damn time. Canada and sports. Yep, fun well, stuff. That's it's what they his, listen for. Ex- exactly. It's it's the Canadian uh, ESPN yes. tonight. That's what we're mm-hmm. doing. That's called TSN. Yes. TSN. Yes. TSN. Turner Sports Network. Turner Sports. Okay. I think it's Turner Sports Network. Sounds right. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, we'll go with we'll it. Go with okay. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, but <laughs> I saw what was it uh, this week? Since uh, Blackhawks have still have the vacancy for the GM. Position. Yes. I was just, I just saw they're like we're putting together a committee yes. for, uh, but we're having X players and everyone decide. I was like, what is this high school? So You're what right. Are we doing well. They they picked like I don't know if that's normal. Yeah, I think or if that's good. I'm confused. Yeah, that's a good question because they've it's never gone this long. Most of the time, yeah. Unfortunately, it's been a while. unfortunately, as we talked about the one but podcast, like it was a unique situation. They lost their GM, so. The kind of management a... wasn't ready for it, so now they're trying to do everything they can to to get somebody, but they haven't done the research yet. I also think oh, too, damn, they're the season's not going very well, so I think they're also kind of strong up a little publicity by doing all this stuff. So yeah. I think when they say that, which is like oh, one of the most frustrating things about hockey, it's like when someone gets hurt, they'll say upper body injury, and you have no idea what that means. <laughs> I think that's kind of like with this case, it's like. They're trying to. The Blackhawks are such a historic and great organization that they do care about their alum. Like it's a big thing. It's a big deal sure. for them. But I think this is kind of more of like a show slash like just letting the fans know that whoever they get as a GM, like they're not just saying oh, this is a good name and he's got experience. We're gonna bring him in. It's they want to make sure he's a culture fit. They want to yeah. make sure he's doing what the fans want to see as well as I, what the players want to see. And I think that's kind of what that move means. Like. It's kind of sorry. I know I was gonna say like I imagine they're probably taking their time because it's probably a media nightmare for them. Oh, PR nightmare. They're just like, oh, it's gonna be a big deal. Yeah. So we're just probably gonna let everything die down, and then maybe. Well, they're just doing everything they can to transition off of what the bad stuff that happens. So they're probably gonna string this GM thing along for a little bit. Um, (laughs) You know, they've got the coach from the minors up right now. Um, You know, all that kind of stuff. So I. I yeah I don't think he I think it's already been said that he's not going to be sticking around no matter what like they'll be bringing in another coach so they'll kind of use that to string along for a little bit so I think basically Damn. it's like time to kind of cool the the fires of and just kind of like being like hey instead of focusing on 
the horrible management of that awful situation. Focus on <laughs> how horrible the team's doing right now, but all the fun stuff to look ahead to and all the changes Do that we're going to be doing. Yeah. Well, there and this team is a full of emotional on, damage, right? Honestly, and and the the paint they're, the the picture they're painting, which is kind of like is true, yeah. is that a lot of their big stars are aging out. So it's like this this new paradigm shift was going to happen eventually because it's like yeah, yeah, Patrick yeah. Kane, Jonathan Taves, like they're just all getting old and they're gonna have to retire soon. So I think that's kind of the the whole idea that I'll have to admit I think the Blackhawks are doing a great job in is that like. They're kind of being like, okay, this horrible thing happened. Let's get the bad publicity off of us. We'll just kind of continue to paint that new things are coming, new sheriff in yeah, town, all yeah. that stuff. The the old days are gone, and these newer days are coming. Yeah. Um. So that's that's kind of my two cents on it. But I don't have any insider info on that. That is just kind of my oh, no, no. my I was, opinion. I was not fishing, Murph. That's fair. That's fair. That is, but just in case people think, uh, <laughs> that is my opinion of how I'm things sitting go. Sitting on the porch, stuff. looking outside, right? waiting for the storm. I right. ain't seriously, yeah. <laughs> well, especially to Chicago is such a tough, tough market to be because they expect good things from their hockey teams. So, so they're it's, basically it's a they're, tough market. So it's I hate like, to use the, the term, but they're basically rebuilding with the core piece being your brother. No, no, no. no. I think that's Seth Jones. Okay. You won't trade. You don't Jones. trade for Seth Jones. who makes that much money, and him not being a core well, I'm piece not, I'm not and superstar like, of your defenseman, like the face, but top three marketing. Maybe no, maybe not. Maybe he's, he's, I think he's kind of like in that area where it's like he's experienced. He's lo- yeah. liked. I think maybe. Unfortunately, it's the same. Is the same thing. Unfortunately, my dad had, but yeah. is that they see him more as he's good publicity. He does all the stuff they ask for to be be out in the community. Um, but probably one of those that he is unfortunately sexy. what I, yeah well, he's unfortunately yeah. what I call a transition guy. Uh, um, that sounds kind of weird, but uh, um, basically it's like aggressive. right. <laughs> basically it's like he's someone that's reliable and he's somebody that you know you might want on there while there's uncertainty. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. once you can get something better, he'll lose a spot if that makes sense. So it's like you know he's maybe near the it's end of his career he'll like as like player. a. Yeah, exactly. As like a Damn. ode to his great career, you know, they could maybe like a young playoff team might bring him in for like a playoff push for the experience he has. But I, no one has, honestly. yeah, I, I don't think he's there yet. I think, Getting I think close. kind of, yeah, a few more years and it'll, it'll get there. I think also if he got into the playoffs a few more times, that would help. But I don't know if it's going to happen with Chicago. Um, but yeah, that's, it's like that's that's, that's unfortunately thing. kind of what I see. Or Chicago sees him as. He stays there for a few more years while they continue with their prospects. Yeah. And then by the time he's ready to retire or maybe they get rid of him, the prospects are ready to come up to fill his spot. And then they already have their core forward players doing yeah. well that they're kind of ready to start getting playoff push. Like that's how these teams are built now where it's like, you know, I think that's the only way you can transition well is that you have your good players that got you in the playoffs. Yeah. You continue doing right by them and doing the best you can. But then you just kind of keep bringing in these little pieces yeah. to like, you know, so that's, the good the good players make them better. And then that's you what get Black your, Hawks like, have done, which like, I'm actually really surprised because usually, yeah. you know, you get that point where everyone gets old and you start yeah. to move them out. And then you're like, all right, well, new coach, new philosophy. Let's move yeah. them out. And then, all right, another two, three years. But they've been like, all right, we'll just let's put these pieces here, those pieces yeah. there. And then they're like, you're still competitive. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, back to your that original yeah. thing you mentioned. Yeah, the, those guys being brought in the GM. I think, you know, those are big, big role guys and big guys with the program after they finished hockey. So it's kind yeah. of like, a, you know, they'll be bumping into them and like that kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah. So it's not like some random alums they grabbed and said, hey, go do this. Like, no, it's like, no, it's it's it'll it's kind of like when you it's like when you well, inter- it's like it's yeah like, it's like when you interview for a job and you meet people that are working yeah. the job that are going to be your coworkers well, and you did, interview with them. Like, it's like I just get worried because like they're they're shopping this around, the, you know, um, to to the fans and whatnot they're like hey look we're right. doing something right so it's like okay well great yeah <laughs> do it more well, the fans the fans like those players they pick too i know that yeah. so yeah that's Good. so we'll see so anyway it's they're, interesting they're... it's gonna be some big stuff so obviously they're gonna take their time so they might not well there's your blackhawks update right since i know we get ravenous <laughs> blackhawks fans i uh, right chicago is just like our no, I was gonna say our second Yarr. highest listening, but they're not actually. No, nope, there's some Chicago people. There you go. You're right. Yeah. Good point. But maybe it's yeah. from Miami. Maybe it's from maybe it's Chicago. Maybelline. Yeah. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, oh man. But unbelievable. Right? Here we are. Oh, but I forgot to mention last game. Uh so they're playing tonight. It was Monday. Yeah. I think they only played last. Connor scored, so that was exciting. Yeah. So he was pretty pumped about there that. So that's good. Yeah. So, you know, I don't I don't think it's career high yet amount of goals, but he's up there this year. I think it's like three, four, something <gasps> like that. Yeah. So he's getting there. Yeah. Burn the tires, light the fires, big daddy. Right, exactly. Let's go. He's got the he's got the goal scoring stick going. <laughs> so let's see if he make it. To... <laughs> uh, he's got the belt. Exactly. Blackhawks belt. Blackhawks belt. I think. They, no, wait. Yes, they do belt. That's okay. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Arizona every, did the belt too. Every time I, I see, I watch those videos because they always pop up randomly on yep. Facebook. I'm like, Florio always gets it. I'm like, what the hell? Is he's amazing. On? He's doing good. He's doing oh, really yeah. good. Yeah. He's kind of one of the big reasons they're still in games half the time. He just speaks French every time he gets the belt. Right. This is funny to me. It's French Canadian. Yes. I know. I don't think it's actual French. It's like street French. Street French. Street French. <laughs> uh, sounds like some good ass food like... though. Street French food. I was gonna say it sounds like something you pay a prostitute for. <laughs> <laughs> street French. Uh or that was oh, yeah. If you guys right, have I... a sudden urge for freedom fries, <laughs> not French fries. Oh uh, jeez. Go to a gym. Don't call yeah. McDonald's. No. Those are bad, bad cravings. Yes. Make Work them out. You shouldn't be loving it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you seen those ones? Was it in China where you have to ride a bike to power your cell phone while you're there, like oh, it's eating? Incredible. Yeah, it's actually like a really great idea. <laughs> Damn! Imagine that. Warping yeah. Spurlock. Welcome. <laughs> Super size me three. <laughs> I'm gonna work out as I get fat. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> as you see, saturated fats overtake your heart. <laughs> 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 oh boy. God. But, what a time. Oh, geez. What a time. What a time to be alive. I know. Right? Well, good. There there you go. Good Blackhawks Corner. Yep. You got all that figured out. Yeah, fun things. Where we're doing good PR today. Hopefully. Good. Oh, no. We'll, 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 we'll shit on something. Yeah, time to, sh- to shit on things. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. I've been I've been dying. I don't know if it's another great transition. Can we hear about this wedding story oh, or what's man. been going on? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I've been I, waiting Zach for this. has been trying to tell me some stuff. Like, I you can't. know what? For the podcast, <laughs> let me wait because I'm going to give my authentic reactions to these stories because <laughs> all right, it's that, these are so I, I've been, the, the preface I will give is an outside individual before Zach goes into oh, what he's okay. going to talk Why about. Not? So one of Zach's college buddies yes. has got married this weekend. These are all buddies that um, he lived with and I think met after me after I graduated. So I yes. think it was like, what, two years? That you lived with them, that I was gone? Yeah, about two years. Yeah. So you met these guys, lived with them, all sorts of crazy stories, insane personalities. Um, But basically, every time they all get together and do something, the most epic, weirdest, (laughs) and hilarious shit happens. Like, I'm probably overselling it, but like, it's like the craziest things that you're thinking, like, one, only in America, and two, like, what the fuck? Like, seriously, like, honestly, some of these things, I'm like, people could go to prison, probably, but it's just like, yeah, it's it's crazy. So with uh, that high note, (laughs) get it started. Here we go. go. Um, I've been so for like the last so it's actually this past weekend so we're we're film we're actually filming God, yeah we're right. filming and recording on exactly. the, on the second of February yes and yeah by the so way happy been, ground all day yeah yeah hey, happy six ground more hawks. fucking weeks of winter damn ass Pontitani Phil <laughs> <laughs> all right well there right? there you go nah, just like there's a weather who forecast. decided that they're like look over there uh, gopher thine seen its shadow and ran away let's make this a holiday <laughs> six more weeks of winter. <laughs> I know people are like it was the farmers, but it's just like, come on, like we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. That's what we should do, actually. We should bum, do a bum, video bum, where bum, we get bum, on bum. farmers only and ask them. Bum. <laughs> I, I like how Murph like segued into this thing and then you took it away. Sorry. All right, we're done. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. Back to the wedding because it was like you know, <laughs> let's just say some groundhogs were popping out. You know what I'm saying? This wedding. <laughs> a lot of pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean it like that, but all right. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, so I've, I've been I've been trying to like I've been trying to figure out how to like really structure this because there there's a lot of stuff. You just don't. You just go with it. You just go with it. Okay. Like Murph said. Yeah. Um. So after like, I used to live with Murph in college first and foremost. Or yeah. kind of add on to stuff that he said, but we 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 kind of live with a lot of hockey guys and mm-hmm. and then I think after he left, I was just like, man, this is gonna be weird. I should probably just do like a random. Basically, whenever you get to college, roommate generator, roommate, yeah, yeah, roommate generator, just you know, they try to match your hobbies or whatever it is. Yeah, 
And luckily I was very fortunate to live with, um, except for probably, you know, one of them. Yeah. He was okay. He a little, little weird. Um, Did but, I meet him? I don't know if I met him. Yeah, you remember AJ? Oh, yeah, yeah. The dude that used to turn on the, the heat to like 84 <sighs> degrees yeah, during the weird. winter time. Yeah. Ah. Right. Ah. <laughs> that's, uh. <laughs> that's how you used to laugh at people. Ah. <laughs> and so I remember, I remember a roommate one time just saying, um, so our, my roommate whose wedding I went to was, his name's Jack. Uh, and he's like. Not Jack Black. No, no. No. Okay, no. continue. I wish. Yeah. It is Wednesday, my dudes. I've been waiting for that. I should have started off with that. Damn it. Uh, Um, Well, you know, it's your podcast. (laughs) Well, I know. It's like our podcast. I know. You're right. Sorry. (laughs) No. So uh, I just remember AJ turning on this one winter. And he's like, he turned on 84 degrees. I'm like, what the? Why is it so hot? I walk out like 84 degrees. And Jack's like, you do that? I'm like, no, I'm not paying for the heat. And, it's, and so he asked her out. He finds out is our, our kind of weird roommate, AJ. He's like, AJ, did you turn up the heat? No. Ah, ah, ah. You think I'm joking. It's exactly how he sounds. Like every caricature of for this weekend, you guys may think I am drunk or. Oh, or no. I, yeah, no. It's, it is spot on. No, Zach's pretty good. At, Zach's very good <laughs> with impersonations. So with yes. theirs, at least. I've worked on it way too long. Yes. But, um, but yeah, it's. But basically, it was Jack's wedding this this past weekend. Yep. Um, he's known Kathleen for so long, and and God, it's probably like five years now. They've been. They've I known forgot each about other. that. It's okay. been. That was after man. college, though, right? Yeah. So we're yeah. old, man. Oof. I believe my ten years coming up for college. All right, continue. Here we go. Oh man. I'm but uh, my life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it's like I think. Uh, oh man, it was uh, it was Jack, myself, uh, Chris, who you guys will get to know very well. Oh yeah. Uh, one of Jack's very good friends, Andy, and then I think Tucker and Mead, which are both in the Air Force with them. Nice. With Jack. So Milkshake didn't make it? I wish. Oh, man. man. I was hoping but he he's, <laughs> Milkshake's one of those dudes. You know what? He shows if, up randomly. If he's he, like Beetlejuice. If, if he did, you would have had to tell me the stories anyway, <laughs> so it's fine. Oh, yeah. man. But it's this is, it, this is really, really epic. So it's like I can't even... Somehow. Literally, I think the police should have been on standby when you guys all got together. <sighs> That's like, especially when you get There's military just... people, oh, it's man. like shit gets extra hard. That's how you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yes, got him. I meant it. Got him. I said it, and I meant it. <laughs> you take it the way you like. You yes, <laughs> but um, giggity. But Continue. we, I actually, I actually knew Chris before I, I met Jack. So Chris, like, we went to like the same satellite campus at Miami. So we're just kind of like. I knew him for about a year and a half before I introduced him to Jack, and then then I find out they're both. You probably both, should quickly clarify. Both went to the Air Force together, yeah. so then we're like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. You should probably quickly clar- clarify yes. for those that don't know. Yes. Satellite is a branch campus, branch so basically, campus, a lot of the big camp- schools to make more money will then also create a separate school yeah. to send people. But it's like you get to pay less in tuition and all that stuff. So in Miami, it was in Hamilton, Ohio, which yes. is like it's you get- the crack capital of Ohio. <laughs> But the Fentanyl. school wasn't like terrible. No. But like, yeah. It's, but anyway, that's so, yeah. Just to clarify that in case people are like, what the hell's a satellite? Like, they're probably thinking you went to space. <laughs> yes, I went to space. So I'm sure schools in, in Europe and no, it's, I think Canada, they have them actually, too. Yeah, they, like, they have one in uh, in Luxembourg. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I forgot yep. about that from Miami. Oh, yeah, Miami. Yeah, we have a connection with Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but it was like, that. yeah, it's, you know, it's cheaper. So it's nice. Yeah. And you can still get the same degree. So yep. everything works out. So I actually end up. Bullshit. <laughs> Twelve thousand dollar cheaper, man. Uh, so actually, I met Chris. Uh, you know, probably before I met Jack, and then you know, after a while, I ended up meeting. You know, basically introducing those two, and then things kind of happen from there. So that's why Murph. That's how porno well, start continues. That's how. That's why Murph keeps talking about these stories. They're yes. so epic. We had many nights out. Whatever. Yes. So uh, uh, basically, I ended up uh, going down to Cincinnati to stay for a couple nights down there. Uh, turns out too, at the time they had. Like one of the nastiest like snowstorms they've had in years. I don't know if they'll compare to this weekend coming up what they're showing. No, but no, yeah, no. nothing but close anyway. to like nothing close to but okay to Columbus. Wow, but. that sucks. Wedding in a huge snowstorm <laughs> yeah. after a huge snowstorm. Okay, yeah. and they, no salt, no nothing like. I that. can't find the white. Out. She's <laughs> can't find the white. Can't find the bride. She's too white. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can't find the white. I can't find the white. I uh, see the white. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like an old person with schizophrenia. <laughs> Reach towards uh, it, Grandpa. <laughs> um, but man, like it was, it was so weird because I haven't seen Jack in maybe a few months, uh, probably for about six months. And then 
oh man, it was probably I haven't seen Chris for years. Say. So it's it's been a number of years. So I remember I remember I think the last time I was at Jack's I was I basically were he basically said to me, Oh hey, you're gonna be my groomsman, It'd be great. I'm like, Oh, this is weird. I barely even talked to you in the last couple of years. Oh, Could I said fine. hello first. <laughs> Could I said hello. I know. <laughs> but we end up having uh like a wedding rehearsal. We go to the wedding rehearsal, we go through everything and Jesus man, it's just like like first of all, the church is nice. And it's it's nice, it's small, like it's it's really well decorated, but you get I'll be honest, you get a lot of damn people who get their nose in the stuff that should not have their nose in weddings. <laughs> Everyone what, what do you mean? Because we're going through the rehearsal and there's a bunch of like women like, Well, I just let me tell you, because my wedding or the weddings I've seen, they do things like this. It's like Oh well, my god. It's like woman and it's not your wedding. <laughs> Chill out. People that can't yeah, shut their mouths. I know. Please. Like that's like one of the things that really kind of irks me. I was like, "Who the hell asked you? <laughs> no one oh, asked you. Geez. Like this ain't your wedding. We're all just invited here. Just stop." So, <laughs> always drama. I know. So we're going through all this stuff, and they're like, "All right, Zach, you just you're gonna take this girl down down the down the aisle." I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna take you out first. Oh. <laughs> Dad so, jokes. I love it. Got it. Got him. Started. Yep. Perfect. Got him. Good wedding. <laughs> So we're just going through all the steps. We went through everything twice, and I'm like, man, this is going to be a while. And then uh, Jack's bride, Kathleen, she's uh, Filipino, so it's like they have their own customs and traditions they're trying to insert into the wedding. And they're like, oh, we'll just add this. We'll add that. And so the wedding's like twice as long as what it really should be. Oh, geez. Okay. Like, all right, whatever. It's, it's your wedding. I'm just here. And uh, <laughs> Such a great wedding guest. I know. <laughs> I'm just like cracking jokes the whole time, and and all the Air Force guys are like, like man, I like this guy. He's nice. He's awesome. <laughs> That's what we gotta do. Is we build camaraderie. <laughs> exactly. See, part of a team. Already. Exactly. <laughs> Hoo ha. That's the Marines, but Hoo-ha. it's fine. <laughs> Hoo ha. <laughs> uh. Just, just sound like you surprise somebody. Exactly. Hoo-ha. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. You ever seen the movies? It's yeah. A movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's after after we we got done with the rehearsal, everyone felt half decent. And then we uh, we went, actually went down the street to a restaurant where they kind of they ended up running it out called uh, don't laugh Mark, cock and bull. Ah. <laughs> so there you go, there you go. It's, it took a while to sink in. As a got him, nice. It's it's just like a old British pub. Which of, course, is, of course, it's nice. Yeah, uh, it was it was awesome. It took, took us up to the second level, and we're all just Damn. like there, just uh, having food. You know, we had drink tickets, everything. So we're just sitting there, just drinking, and um, Chris is. I, I got to tell you, Chris is very particular. He's yeah. He he understands, and and you guys are probably gonna be all triggered and whatnot. But he likes to trigger warning. He likes to break women down mentally, um, not for any bad reasons really. Let's it's not really nefarious. I know he enjoys fucking with people. Yeah, like in a weird mental way. Yes, but it's also kind of funny in a way. But you guys are probably like, oh, that sounds awful. Whatever. But it's just some of the stuff he's done in the past. Yeah. It's like he'd actually make a good detective. Like he'd be he'd be like just the, like you said the oh, way yeah. he the way he <laughs> reads cues and the way he can yeah. like kind of figure out how to push buttons, but not go not that like by the end of the discussion you're like fuck that guy. You're kind of <laughs> like, huh? You you more so respect him rather. You've than been just... mind raped. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a good laughs> but it's like the thing with Chris was just so weird. It, it's like yeah, it's weird seeing him again because. You know, I'm still like in college mode sometimes with him and some of the things that we've done and, and whatnot. So it was always weird. But he's sitting there like drinking and I'm, I'll never forget it. The first thing I, I see him with, he's like, he pulls up with wine. And I was like, Chris, what the hell are you doing? He's like, and this is where all the, this is where all the uh, caricatures are going to start coming in. Oh, all the impressions. Go. Yeah. He's like, he's got this one. <laughs> he's like, listen, man, there's. Cause like there's no more wine glasses, so I got this plastic one. I kind of feel cheap. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> what scares me is how accurate that is. Like lisp and every. It's like not even. A, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't that say it's a lisp, but just like it's a high pitch, like high voice. And he's a tall guy, and he's a, yeah. like high voice, and it's, it's the way he draws out his s's. It's hilarious, but like, <laughs> but also like it kind of works for him. Like you're kind of like you're not bothered by it. He anyway. was weird about him. Is like he's so unathletic. But his yeah. dad was like one. He's actually his dad's actually one of the leading scorers for the Cincinnati basketball team I in their about history. That. Yeah, yeah. And so it's he just kind of got that build. He's lanky. He's tall. Yeah. He kind of got that build. Lanky right. and tall, yeah. but 
And Probably if you hit the gym, you would be. What? But yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. He always complains about his arthritis. Listen, man, Jeez. I got arthritis yeah. from the Air Force. Anyway, so yeah, he those has sons of guns. Board, like, they already yeah. pay me money. And I can already tell the bar <laughs> named like Cock and Bull. You're not getting wine there. Like that's like <laughs> it's a beer house. Oh man, it's such a. I've been I've been to weddings and and parties, you name it, with different like ethnicities, but there was something about white people and Filipinos that are just so funny because white people just chilling like so you get you get some of the yep. air force guys are like all right i want to drink a little bit i want to have i want to have a few beers i want to have some liquor i'll be good um and then you got the filipinos are like all right now time to drink it's like oh god <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's, I don't, yeah i don't know how to explain my brother said that too about his, his girlfriend serbia and said the same thing like serbian weddings like they go like it's a yeah. big party in other cultures well, this, it's like in the u.s it's like you spend a lot of money but it's like you only do a few hours and then everyone goes home whereas like it's, it's like, my, my brother said the serbian weddings they close the place down like yeah. literally people are like you need to leave and they're like it's two o'clock and they're like and they're still going strong like it's crazy <laughs> like yeah it just it, i mean at this point it's like not, the night before the wedding so i'm just trying to like get a feel for the people and the place and i'm like so they hand us our our, our ties because we all got like matching ties for the next day and I'm like, oh, this will be good. It'll be good. And uh, we finally got our food. Good ass food. Cock and bowl. You're doing it. I, w- I would love to sponsor you. Cock and bowl. Y'all go get some. some oh, you food. know, I'd love that sponsorship, but continue. <laughs> get the cock and bowl. <laughs> but it's like, he's, you say that for no reason at all during a right? sentence. Do you cock like the bowl. taste of cock and bowl? <laughs> <laughs> if you do, yes, Murph, yes. tell me more. There you go. Um, but it's, it was, uh, it was such a weird thing because uh, just seeing Chris and then Jack's friend Andy, and I, I I'm gonna get some weird weird listens here for the rest of the time. Andy sounds like not so much now because he's more calm, but when you kind of get him wild wound up a little bit or him speaking fast, he sounds like Cartman from South Park. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> Andy Kimbe. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Jeez. How are you doing, Chris? How's it going? <laughs> the the crap they used to say to each other was like the funniest thing I've ever heard. But Andy's a lot more like chill, words a little bit spaced out, so it doesn't really sound like Cartman as much anymore. But when he when he like when he smokes or whatever, it's the weirdest thing. It's like, hey, Chris, do you want you want a cigarette? It's like I don't know, man. It's like I I don't think so, Andy. I just don't want to do it. And it just. The the interactions uh, between the two are just weird, and then you get the Air Force guys who are just like, "Hey man, let's drink," and then it just out of all that stuff, I'm just trying to mentally just take this in, and I'm trying to like process it, and um, and also I'm like trying to keep an eye on like Kathleen's bridesmaids for not like trying to like hook up with any of the groomsmen, and it's just oh a man, mess. you're just being the buzz kill, buzz kill me, no, no, there. like oh. I'm I'm trying to figure out who's gonna cause the most drama. Oh, who's gotcha. Not. I'm like trying to stay out of it. Um, and there's a few people from K- uh, Kathleen's sides, like pff, that were just like trying to start stuff, ah, trying shit. to like hook yeah. up with guys who, and then trying to start stuff, trying to start drama. I'm Jeez. like, geez, I was like, damn, I've been here ten minutes, we're already doing this. But um, weddings will do that. But there's uh, there's like a there's like a third, like a third wheel here, and it's it's the funniest thing. I told I gave Murph glimpses of it. Uh, so if you know like Jack's. Uh, family a little bit. They actually, a lot of them came out of like Chicago. That's right. Yep. Or yeah, they basically a lot yep. of them came out of Chicago. They have yep. a lot of like, you know, small mob ties within yep. the city from the that, past. Yep. So it's, it's really interesting to hear like a lot of, a lot of the stories they had, but uh, Jack's dad, he actually, so they, they were in Chicago. They grew up in a lot like South side Chicago. They went through a lot of the mob stuff and they used to fight for fun uh, I think his dad used to box too, so he, that's how he made a lot of money. And then I think, basically, long story short, he got into trouble with you know other mobs or whatnot. So they ended up yep. leaving to like Green Bay, mob life. Yeah, they ended up leaving to like Wisconsin. That's where Jack was born. Gotcha. But there's, I think it's Jack's uh, dad's brother, Uncle Mike. And I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta preface this because this dude. Is so non PC. I think he actually was in the military as well. I think he was like a marine or okay. Or oh something. boy, yeah. So just but, indestructible. <laughs> just dude, like he's so non PC, and it was the funniest thing. Like everybody I know will probably be horrified, but this stuff he would say would be the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life. 
And the whole time he's like, Jack, you're going to love the stuff I'm going to wear tomorrow. He's like, why? What are you talking about? I was like, I got the perfect tuxedo for the occasion. You're going to love it. And he's like, okay, whatever. It's tuxedo. Okay, shut up. And so he turns around and he's got this look on his face. He's like, well, Jack, since it's uh, the night before uh, you get you get hitched, I, I feel like I have to get, I have to buy all you guys some shots. I was like, all right, shots, sweet, awesome. And, and so he's just sitting at the end of the bar and he just sees like, there's one bartender and she's just like talking away at the other side and, and he's like just sitting there waiting for five minutes. And I know he's going to say something, but I don't, oh, I didn't gosh. expect the things that's going to come out of his mouth. Oh gosh. He turns her over and he's like, excuse me, when your ladies are done cackling, I would like to buy some shots over here. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. Jeez. <laughs> I was like, oh, everyone yeah. starts dying. She's like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, my gosh. This guy buys 15 shots for, like, people around us, and a lot of us get doubles. I'm like, Jesus, man, what the hell? There you half go. people get Jameson, half people get Jack Daniels, and we'll just take a couple shots. Like, hey, good luck tomorrow. Yeah. And then take a few shots. I'm like, man, this is going to be a shit show tomorrow. Oh, Mike. yeah. That's how and, it works, though. Jack, Jack was like, oh, yeah, no doubt. No. Open bar, we're all done. Um, So I was... I decided to like get back at a decent time because I want to get some sleep and just relax. And I'm just like, man, I can't wait. So I put my head down, wake up the next morning. I got all my my suit and everything all together. Everything's good to go. That's a whole story within itself with the suit. <laughs> I can't fit in the crap anymore. Um, but long story short, we uh, we get to we start to play. We actually start to get together. Like start, I start getting ready. I get to the to the damn cathedral. And this, this is where all this crap starts, man. It's it's the weirdest thing, and and it's like all of us start to like pile in like one by one. But the thing you gotta understand, there was such a nasty st- snowstorm that day that all of us were like really late. Yeah. Um, luckily, I was like on time, so it wasn't too bad. It's was, like, God, it was like four o'clock. I think there uh, people had to get there at four. People they want to start at five. We ended up pushing it back to six. Dear gosh. Okay. Because like. Do like I'm not kidding. Like, I have my Waze app on. And there was yeah. like three accidents. People on the can't way. drive in the snow. Yeah, that's like well, yep. down. Oh well, yeah, like down in Cincinnati, like Northern Kentucky. If you get like a dusting, it's yeah, it's, it's done. A shit show. Yeah, yeah it's a shit because show. they they don't put salt down or anything. No, which is weird because they get snow a lot. But yeah, yeah, it's weird. Weird. What the hell are you guys doing? I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, but I mean this this was pretty. This was a few inches and. And they didn't put any salt down, so there was like three accidents on the major Jeez. highway. So my Waze app is like, "All right, you're gonna go around the the whole highway system." I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was sliding a little bit. Like, yeah, All right, yeah, we're gonna get take there. these back roads I'd never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Gobble, Gobbledygook Boulevard. <laughs> All right, <laughs> seems oh, safe. Oh, jeez. Um, but <laughs> finally get to the the church and and uh, <sighs> this is probably like my second wedding I've ever been to. But it it was just it was like a weird like like influx of events yeah that's, 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 that's how they work yeah <laughs> that's how it works it's, it's like i don't never heard of anyone been like i went to a wedding nothing happened it was very boring uh, it, was it was normal like, like a lot yeah normal. Normal. a lot of things always happen yeah people <laughs> just, love to do things on wedding at weddings <laughs> it just yeah. it was just weird and i'm like i'm sitting there and, and people are just i can tell jack is nervous and as rightfully so he's sitting there like i've never seen jack more nervous than probably a finals week Ooh, for college, so he's just like I still have nightmares <laughs> about those. Oh, Continue. Yeah. He's like, I'm like, hey Jack, like, congrats, man. He's like, thanks, man, thanks, man. And he's got like the wedding certificate in his hand. He's like, thanks, buddy. And I'm like, all right, something's been good, man. He's like, yeah, just. <laughs> so he, we're going down, like, don't going down the aisle with every, to meet everybody up front, and and um, everyone's asking questions like, how do you feel, man? And he's <laughs> he's like, I. You know what? It's 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 a lot to kind of like go through at once, but it's fine. And um, and we're all kind of like trying to like help them, co- coax them through everything. And you know how it is. And um, <laughs> Chris comes up. He's like, "Listen, I don't believe in weddings, but you guys are going to do okay." <laughs> and <laughs> Jack was like, "Oh, that's so Chris." It's yeah. like, "Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it." <laughs> like Chris thought that was the ultimate sentence that he needed to hear. <laughs> It's gonna calm your nerves. I got this for you. <laughs> Jack walks away to help out with a few things, and Chris is like, "I give it eight months." <laughs> I was like, "You're not supposed to say that, man." I'm like, watch me. <laughs> That's like Jesus Christ. 
my god. This is not the first yeah, time they started they, great, we started yeah. talking shit to each other. Like this this is how we typically do it though. Yep. We we don't ever like really we show support in weird ways, but if we talk shit to each other, it's very much our in a very supportive way. Yes. So from here on out, things get very hectic and very in your people's minds, probably a little bit I wouldn't say violent, but no. just like non supportive. You're like oh, yeah. these silent like awful people. No, that no, yeah, no. But <laughs> so, that's the funny part about Chris is he can say that and but it's supportive, you, but he's also real in that he <laughs> thinks it's only gonna last eight months, but you're not offended by that. So it's it weird. It, he's weirdly can say things like that. <laughs> All I remember was like Chris was like looking around, and, like the details in this church is tiny, but it, it was really well done, really yeah. nice. And I remember Chris looking around, he's like, you know, this this is not a not a bad place for religion I don't believe in. I was like, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> and he's like, oh, you know me, Zach. I was like, to <laughs> Chris doesn't really believe in organized no. religion. So you got to understand, too, he's such a weird, shady character. Yeah. So the last couple of months, he he was telling me that he was been living in like uh, the Philippines because he'd just been traveling around because he, he actually got a good chunk of money from the Air Force for all the damage they'd done on his body. Jeez. He finally got the money. He's been like pressuring the Air Force for years because his his knees, his back... A lot of his joints are all messed up from like carrying all the heavy equipment every yeah, single day. Yeah, yeah. And so they finally were able to prove, all right, his lack of cartilage and a lot of his joints were because of that, the Air Force. Yeah. So now he's get he's got a good chunk of money built up and so he's been traveling a little bit. Government and, uh, pays. Hey. Whatever works. But all I remember was <laughs> later on that that time he's like he's like, you know what, I joined a really great group of religious people. I kind of think it's a cult, but you know what? They're really nice people. I was like, that's a weird sentence to even oh my gosh, consider yeah. being a part well, of. Well, you know, we're back to the cult podcast that <laughs> talks about hockey and football. <laughs> Continue. It's such a Chris line, too. Oh, he's my like, gosh. He's like, they're really nice people, but I can't tell if it's cult. <laughs> oh, probably is. Oh, my gosh. Do you feel influence? A little. <laughs> but um, but uh. it just it's it's just funny. Like, Chris is, like, doubting the religion. You've got... His Air Force buddies are like, oh, I can't wait to drink tonight. And then <laughs> it's weird. Like you have two of his Air Force buddies, uh, Mead, who are he's really like, he's like that kind of got that pretty boy face, and he, he obviously could get any chick he wants. Okay. And then you got his Sounds other like friend. They got you too. All right, good deal. No, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then his uh, another guy, uh, Tucker. He's like this really like sensitive guy who just wants to like schmooze his way to a, a woman. And there's two different styles of how they can like talk to women. Okay. And, yep. And Chris is like, I don't like you. <laughs> it's like the three like three spectrums. Yeah. Yeah. It's Chris the weirdest is, yeah. thing. Chris is like elementary school kind of thing where he's like, Yeah, well he'll just go to a girl, but I don't like you. The girl's like, I'm into you. Let's do this. Do what you want with me. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris like, you're disgusting. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. But it's like it's it's just this whole culmination of just weirdness that's brewing and brewing and Oh, um, then add alcohol then, to that, and things get even weirder. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. I'm not even close. To I the am after like, party I wish I had a seatbelt here because this is like, yeah, that's Jesus. Um, but then we get to a point where it's like, um, some of the bridesmaids are are Filipino, and and they're you got a couple Filipinos, you got a black girl, and like a few other like nationalities. I remember Chris is like pointing them out, like, ooh, they good looking. And then you got all these other people too, like kind of just eyeing each other. So you know, like they're kind of setting the stage for something later. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be fun. This will be interesting. Um, so yeah, we we kind of get through the whole. We get we start off for the for the wedding, and it's just kind of a weird, awkward experience. So they always are, but it's like I don't know. I'm like walking down. I'm like walking down with uh, the girl that's supposed to be like around my, basically with the bridesmaid. I'm like, all right, make sure I get this time right. Yeah, it's the worst. All right, this works. And then I'm like, the whole time I'm scared, like tripping over myself, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? So finally, we get through the whole thing, and and it's so different from the, uh, it's so different from like uh, the whole thing with with the. the uh, rehearsal so we're we're still sitting there trying to figure things out and right and uh i'm just like all right no one's really joking we're just trying to get through this support them whatever and it was good everyone everyone had a good time things went off with a hitch and everything was good so um other than that jack got married things were there good go. yep yeah. um, no objections no good. no objections good. thank goodness um oh and i gotta 
as I was alluding to, uh, Uncle Uncle Mike showed up. Yes. Um, as he was talking about his whole <laughs> tuxedo, his whole classy tuxedo, he shows up and, and he says to Jack, he's like, Jack, I'm here. And he's like, <laughs> Uncle Mike, what about your what about your tuxedo? What, what the hell's going on here? And he's like, I got my tuxedo. And this guy is wearing like military, like the tan cream boots with de- <laughs> denim pants and denim shirt and he's like and he's got suspenders on with a tie and he's like that's not even a tuxedo and he says it's he's like it's a canadian tuxedo oh geez <laughs> dad jokes dad jokes oh my god you gotta be kidding me i just can't believe you couldn't find a denim jacket i feel like there's definitely one of those out there i know right it's kind of weird yeah anyway really gotta top it off right as i say he was what half just, just half-assed it I at this point I'm like I nothing will surprise me anymore. Right. So um basically we get to the point where it's like uh another one of Jack's relatives co- come in. Come here. Here you go. Um and then that's why I can remember that's all I can remember getting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Mike oh god, I remember after uh Uncle Mike was was through. Oh man, Jack's other uh uncle comes through and yeah. and he's kind of a weird dude, but He's like looking outside. I'm not hearing anybody that's normal in this way. No, <laughs> no, you're not gonna get any normal. Does hear um, a lot of weird dude? But weird basically, dude. what happened right. was like he gets, he looks outside. He's like, "Is anybody from the church gonna, you know, plow this up or just get all the snow off?" He's like, "No," and he's like, "All right." So the guy just starts doing the whole like Jeez. front steps. The starts just shoveling everything. Well, that's like, kind of nice for the bride. Like, she, okay. She's wearing probably gonna slip on that. So yeah, that's a good idea. All right, that's it. Just I was like, "Whoa, that's okay. nice. It's not too weird. It's nice." All right, continue. There but um. Yeah, so we end up getting to the funniest part is like we get to the reception and it's like oh like a town over. Yeah, we get to I think it's over in Fairfield. Okay. So we're over over there and then uh it's actually in, it's like a reception hall just for celebrations. And it was actually pretty nice. Um and I remember <laughs> I could tell like the whole time, I guess. I, I found out that Andy was on something or whatever. Andy was one of Jack's friends. He's just like, guys, the the pastor's looking at me. It's like what? The pastor was looking at me the whole time, like he was waiting for something. I was like, "You're paranoid, man. Just stop. Just stop." Jeez. But um, but when we get to the reception hall, like it was, it was actually pretty nice. Um, we get there and then they were. Wait, did you ever find out what he was on? You kind of just left us on a cliffhanger there. Oh, some sort of edible or something. Oh, okay. I was like, gotcha. "This is odd. <laughs> this whole thing is weird." Uh. And then, uh, but basically, what happened was we ended up getting to the part where it's like. We um we get the reception hall and what ended up happening was this like Chris at this point was like he started drinking pretty early and started okay. getting toasty a lot like a lot of people during yep. weddings oh yeah and it was it was really fun because I love just walking up to a bar and then people were just being like oh what do you want and there's it's all free so it's it's always nice people are always willing to buy you drinks at an open bar <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically so it's uh. the whole thing was just so much fun and I. I this is where Chris goes downhill. Oh just, yeah, oh boy. Things get things get interesting, and next thing you know, um, we get to a point where it's like, uh, God, I even know what part. So we get the, like the food and everything. Yeah, We're yeah, having yeah, fun. Yeah. You just see Chris just slowly drinking. It's like, hey man, He's drinking his hard stuff. Well, yeah, he, like, he becomes he becomes. This is the thing you got to know about Chris. He becomes best friends with like uh, everybody yeah. who works behind the bar and yep. whatnot. So they're like, oh, try this, try that. Like we've been working on this, working on that, and the next thing you know. It's like it turns into, uh, um, it turns into like this weird mix, and and he starts drinking and drinking, and next thing you know, I'm I'm just on the dance floor, just having fun. And I hear, I hear Chris, um, singing uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh he overtakes he overtakes the the microphone and starts singing Frank Sinatra, "Take Me to the Moon" or whatever it is. <laughs> like, oh, Does he even God. know all the words? Actually, yeah, it's kind of okay. Weird. Interesting. All, the words. all right, all right, you know. And Andy, Some woman like that, I don't know. Yeah, he's okay. Just, you know, doing his weird fluid dance, and Andy's <laughs> spacing out, and he's like, "This uh, chicken's really good, man." Everyone's dancing, and he's like, "I love this chicken." I'm like, "Okay, good for you." <laughs> but um, and then you got me and uh, and one of the bridesmaids flirting, and and the next thing I know, like I see, uh, I think it kind of died down. I see Chris start to like, just like randomly, I, I turn my head, I see him making out with a bridesmaid, uh, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh no, oh no." And then obviously those two go into the bathroom like, oh, we all know what they're doing. They come out and <laughs> first thing you hear is, is <laughs> one of the bridesmaids saying, 
just echo like, why didn't you tell me he has a girlfriend? Duh. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? Oh jeez. So that's <laughs> there. It's so hard to space it out properly because like there's just so much stuff. And I remember, you know, at the end of the <laughs> night, I mean, it was a great night. Jack had an unbelievable time. We ended up like, we ended up um, going to like, ironically, we went to a bar. In our tuxes and stuff. What? We end up going to a bar and everyone, like, everyone does after weddings. It's just but, if the bride and groom are sober enough to do it, it's oh, usually yeah. the problem. Yeah. yeah. No, they are. So, but it's it's been. Uh, but uh, yeah, Jack, Jack. So hanky panky in the bathroom for a <laughs> wedding. That's like you know. But that's it, pretty it, legendary. That, but the funniest part was was like when Chris uh, when Chris ends up uh, kissing this girl. I just I remember seeing there's like a you have the tables here and then you have yeah. like the area where. The workers are coming in and out to help, like okay. the food, putting the foods down. And remember, they're they're coming in. They just they see Chris making out with somebody, and they're like, oh. <laughs> "There's like four of them in the bag, just like, oh my god." <laughs> phones come out. Like, oh, Everyone damn, always damn. takes phones out, exactly. <laughs> but uh, uh, but no, like it was a really good night, and you know, Jack and Kathleen threw a hell of a wedding. It was kind of weird because like all the there wasn't a whole lot of young guys out there, okay. young people like us, and they were out there just having fun, but. Um, there's a lot of older people and they're like, well, oh, it's 10 o'clock. We're all done. See you guys. Great wedding. We'll see you around. And the white was, people, I know. <laughs> they were just done. It's, uh, it, it was weird. They're like, Oh, I'm tired now. I guess we're just going to go home. Hey, congrats. Geez. Enjoy marriage. Right. <laughs> so it's just like, it was just stuff like that, man. It's, it was, I always love going back to hanging out with college guys. It, like the people I hung out with because it's, uh, it's always a fun time. Unfortunately, yeah. we uh, got to live in reality. We but. we relive the fun days, but then we realize we're all old as hell, and the <laughs> hangovers know, right? are way worse than they used to be, <laughs> and the budgets are way tighter than they used to be. Or if not, like you just yeah. feel worse about it. So it's like, yeah, it's like before. It's like, uh, you know, you work for to go to school and party, and then now it's like I work for rent and groceries and gas and works. car, and then you spend money on the bar, and you're like, oh, why did I do that? So yeah, I that's know. like oh yeah, but open bars help. So that always helps. Uh, oh, yeah. But that is hilarious. That is oh geez, that's oh, like, yeah. that is crazy. That's so Chris. <laughs> that's so Chris. It's oh my gosh. They, and he actually no, he probably would tell his girlfriend. He would not care. So, oh yeah. yeah. But oh man, it's it was overall it was it was just too much fun. But I hope you guys got a little bit of a look into college. Very slight. College, like, oh, that that's like. like I don't even think that's like scratching college. like the sur- no, the, not even even scratching the surface. Like I think you might have even just like buffered the surface there. <laughs> like you it's just, just like you, yeah, you, that's you barely the glance. shit that goes down in college. Yeah, that's, hopefully I'll, I'll give you guys more yeah. of a look on that. But oh yeah, people are like, Oof. oh, you go there for higher education. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's oh. all that fun stuff. Hope you guys have a fun week. Right. Unfortunately, Merce got adult league. I know. Hockey. Unfortunately, got to call it call it short this week. But um, yeah, appreciate it as always. Oh, perfect. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode eleven of Maple Glazed. If you guys have any issues, you guys uh, leave a rating for us. Uh, like, follow, subscribe on every on every social media. Appreciate the support, and see you guys next week.